Hello, so let's uh, examine this. Uh, the force on a beam is really fundamental to building buildings, bridges, skyscrapers, everything. So here's a plastic ruler, maybe what you have, and you can see it's a very thin piece of plastic. It's a millimeter. It just flexes like this. It has basically no strength whatsoever in this direction. If I were to take one of our quarters, or let me take, for example, a 50 cent piece and put it on here, and it would, well, okay, I'm not going to go too much into this, but if I just see if it'll hold up a 50 cent piece, well, it sags inches, okay? So it can't even hold up a, a, a 50 cent piece. On the other hand, if you take this and turn it vertical, like this, it has huge strength. If I try to push it down in this direction, it just doesn't go. It may try to twist and flop, but the strength pushing down when it's like this is like a thousand times, a thousand times stronger than like this. Okay? And it, it goes, the reason for that, it goes like the cube. It's an engineering problem. Actually, you can figure it out from that um, potential energy curve between neighboring atoms that we have in the textbook and which I've shown you, and I'm not going to drag it out again, but. Uh, atoms, atoms next to each other act like they have a spring between them. And you can go through the, the calculation and ask what's that springiness. Well, here's the springiness in this direction, but the springiness in this direction is very hard, very, very uh, tight spring. And it goes like the cube of this thickness. That's the strength, the cube of this thickness. Now, this is a very, very thin, has no thickness at all, hardly. So the cube of that's really small, so it has no strength cube of this is huge, has very large strength. Now here's our 30 centimeter, 12 inch steel ruler that we've had from the beginning. Same thing, by the way. It's stronger than plastic, so sure enough, it'll hold up more. It'll put a bit of still flexes. No problem. It flexes. Uh, maybe it's 100 times stronger than the plastic. In this position, it's 10,000 times stronger than the plastic. It's huge, okay? It just will not flex at all. So that is the basis on which we will build a bridge, for example. So how do you build a bridge? Well, you know, you can Google this, and there are some photographs in the, in the textbook, for example. And so I started out with, you know, something like this. You want to have, I, and then, oh yeah, by the way, the, um, the ground rule I made for myself is to use simple paper, okay? Now, so these are just strips of computer paper, which I used a pair of scissors, and I just cut them up into, you know, 11 inch long, uh, one inch wide strips. So I made several of these. And um, now, you can, of course, take the manila folders in your box, in your physics box, and you can cut up manila folder strips. Now, manila folder strips are stiffer, heavier than paper. And it works, um, works better, by the way. In fact, I've learned this evening that it's much better to use manila folder rather than simple paper. Paper is, of course, extremely weak. Let me get one. Here you go. Here's a paper strip. Here's a paper strip, 11 inches long, inch wide. I just cut it up with scissors. This paper strip is, of course, weaker than the plastic ruler. I mean, the paper strip will hardly even hold itself up. <laughs> it's so weak, okay? So here it is, right? I try to pull it up from here. You know, it's, it's so weak. So how do you build a bridge, a strong bridge, out of something so weak? Well, the answer is you play the same trick. You orient the, um, the beam, it's called. This is called the beam. Orient it this way. Then you have to have something to keep it vertical so it doesn't fall over like this or twist or something. The trick for doing that is to put a sort of a corrugation on it like this. So that's what I did. So I took another piece of this that I kind of made a zigzag. Okay, in other words, I made triangles, by the way. I made triangles. And then I, um, I both tried to tape these down, and I also, for this case, I used a stapler. Okay, I used a hand stapler to put staples in this. Okay, and so on. And I didn't finish this one because it was kind of hard. And then I had the other problem is after I get this side done, how do I get this other side done? Done, right because you have to have one on both sides like this right so yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to do something like this so I gave up on this one okay so then I thought well maybe if I have something like this and then I have a flat so it's not just triangles but it's more like a um, trapezoid or a truncated uh, triangle 
And then I have on these flat regions, I can put a tape. I can just tape it down with our plastic tape. And it worked okay, but it's really not very good. It's not very uniform, and uh, there wasn't any fun for me. So I gave up on that. Then here's another one. I kind of brought this one to completion. In other words, I I uh, did one whole one whole thing, and I have it, I have them taped. I, I use tape, and then the problem still came. How am I going to get this other side on here? And you can think about doing that in a classroom, for example. If you have, for example, super glue, you could just go down here and just do a dot of super glue on each one of these and just hold it in place. It'd be great. Okay. I don't have super glue. So again, I've tried several things and none of them work very well, but in the classroom, of course, that's the way actually science and engineering often is. That your first models that don't work very well, you have another idea, um, you, um, <clears throat> you uh, try something else. So I tried something else. Uh, instead of these kind of small triangles, well, let me emphasize, by the way, on the question of a triangle here. If you have a triangle like this, Here's a triangular. If you push down on it, apart from the paper flexing, it doesn't, it doesn't collapse. It doesn't collapse. If you had a square frame, square frame, and push down on it, it could easily collapse. Either way, it could collapse. But a triangle will not collapse. So a triangular structure in anything, like a building or a bridge, is really very important. And you'll see, by the way, here in this uh, in the recorded lecture, you'll see the trestle bridge basically is a whole bunch of triangles all welded together. Okay, very strong. So I made a, I made the uh, triangle structure a little bigger, and then I used staples. I used staples when I could, and I used tape when I couldn't use the staples. Here's a staple holding that in, and a staple holding this in. Okay, so on the ends I could get the stapler in the staple things, and so, and then um, okay, so now I have two beams. Here are the two beams. And here's the triangular structure to keep the two beams vertical and parallel to each other. And then I also needed something. I needed something to um, keep it from, you know, flexing out here. So I put, I taped on the top, decking. Okay. So I taped decking on the top here. Okay. So that's it. So here's my bridge. So how do you know if it's a good bridge? Well, first off, I want to do something like I want to weigh the bridge. I mean. This is a very lightweight bridge, of course, right? And if you were doing an engineering, for example, in fifth or sixth grade, and you wanted to emphasize um, engineering aspects, you could ask um, students to build the lightest possible bridge so that it would therefore, for example, be the cheapest possible bridge. And so maybe having a lightweight bridge is a good idea. So if I weigh this, and you weigh this on your, on your very, very nice, uh, oops, on your very, very nice uh, electric scale, electric balance, this bridge weighs 4.21 grams. 4.21 grams. Okay. Simply paper and tape, a couple of staples. Okay, so now how much weight, how much mass will this support before it collapses? Now, in the building, uh, building bridges, for example, around Iowa, there's a um, smaller bridges around Iowa. You'll see that there's a um, there's a limit. Um, they posted so many tons. If your truck weighs more than so many tons, you cannot go across this bridge, because that's the failure failure point of the bridge. More than that, it may collapse. Actually, that number is probably three times. The failure because there's a th factor of three for engineering safety and so on. So in any case, let's see how good this bridge is. Uh, and I'm just going to use our piece of PVC pipe. I cut off a piece of it for something else, and our little block right here, okay, that we that we used previously for our ramp. So you can use for here. Actually, you can use uh, a couple of books or a couple of a couple of anything. By the way, just okay. Now this is a a, a bridge span of more than. 10 inches, okay? A little bit more than 10 inches. So, what can it hold up? Well, okay. Holds one quarter, no problem. So let me just keep on piling on quarters. And, um, oops. I'm gonna lose my money here. And you can see it's not flexing. I mean, it's flexing a little bit, as any structure must flex. 
but it certainly doesn't look like it's going to collapse. So let me just keep on going. This is two, four, six, eight. That's uh, nine. That's ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen quarters. Sixteen quarters. If I put on a fifty cent piece, that's two quarters. So did I say that's sixteen or eighteen? Anyway, that's 60. So that's 18. And 50 cent piece, 4. So this is 22. 22 quarters, and it hasn't budged, okay? Now, I can fish through here, and we can put more and more quarters on, okay? And I, I guess I'm not going to go through that. That's 22, 23. I'll go to, say, 25 just for fun. And I need more quarters. Well, there you go. That's the collapse. So 24. Actually, there was a weak corner here. If I had been a little more careful, I uh, could have avoided that. But anyway, let, it, it'll hold, uh, what was it? 23. Let's say 23. I forgot exactly. That's how good this bridge is. 23. What is that? What's 23? Well, let's figure that out. Let's go 23 times the mass of one quarter. 23. Okay, a quarter. Five point six eight grams. It's one quarter. So that's a hundred and thirty point six grams. One hundred and thirty point six grams. So let's divide that by the mass of the bridge. It's four point two one. And that is thirty one. So this holds this bridge holds thirty one times its own weight. Now that's a strong bridge just paper here okay 31 times now uh, you know and now if you, you work on this man you may find uh, clever more clever ways and so on and better techniques and so on and make it even better but that's a pretty good starting point for a bridge for a simple bridge so I would encourage you to try to build a shall we say a high quality bridge like this but maybe you do a better job than I've done and so on and this is only has say one bank okay one could build the, be the best thing would be to uh, have another bank over here of this, right? So you have one, two, three beams here instead of just two beams. And then with the same, you have to do the same zigzag here. That may, in fact, be difficult. I encourage you to find clever ways to do this, okay? Or find clever ways for children to do this. Then that would be even stronger, okay? With not that much added weight. So you might even do better than 31 times. Okay, so now... I think in the uh, recorded lecture, also in the text, there is another, there's another um, simple thing shown. You just take eight and a half by eleven paper, and you just, um, you know, fold it, wrap, fold it, wrap, fold it back and forth, and you get just this. Okay, it's like an accordion, by the way, just an accordion. And then, in order to keep it from, um, keep it from, uh, you know, falling apart. I did the same thing as I, I taped a top onto it, okay? So that gives you, the top gives you something to put the coins on. It also gives it a little more structure. So this is the simplest thing. There's no, there's no other piece of tape in here. There's nothing fancy like, like this, okay? It's just sort of simple. So let's see how well this bridge does. Here, here. Okay, here, here. And it, it, st it still actually flexes apart and so on. It's uh, not so... Maybe not so great, but let's start piling on our quarters again and see how good it is. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This makes fourteen. This makes sixteen. And here's eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. 24 it's even doing better than the fancy bridge okay now in order to qualify as a good bridge one would have to you know shape this up a little bit and so on but there you go now just for fun um, it's always nice uh, to test something to destruction that's what is actually done by the way with automobiles you build an automobile it's a beautiful device is uh, lots of safety features and so on 
an automobile company will run a car into a wall, or of course the dummy inside of it, to see where it fails. Where is the failure in a car that hits a wall? So I'm going to try to test this until it fails. I don't want to put more coins on. This just takes too much time. Let me just push down on it here. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm pushing. Okay, the failure is over here. It starts failing over here. If I do this more, is it falling off the edge? Yeah, yeah the failure is over here. There you go. Okay, so that again is comparable, maybe even slightly better than the fancy bridge. So, um, there you go. I encourage you to have some fun because this is something the kids can do. Day after day, you can make bigger competitions. This is just a, um, for example, a, uh, uh, you know, a, a one foot bridge, like an 11 inch bridge, for example. But you can make more challenging things. For example, how about three feet? Can you have a team of students build a three foot bridge, three foot long bridge? Or an arch bridge. This is like a trestle bridge, but an arch bridge that has an arch in it like this, okay? Like a Roman arch. So from to this bank to this bank, and then uh, with a roadway in between, shall we say. Or a um, suspension bridge, like the Golden Gate Bridge, and so on. There are lots of bridges. And um, so, this is the subject of statics. And so all of the buildings on campus, uh, and the building you're in now, uh, actually was designed with uh, computer codes, very complex computer codes, in which um, every point inside, every point of the structure, every point where something, you know, one beam is attached to another fixture, every point in the structure has a net zero force on it. Net zero force means it's not going to accelerate. So it's going to stay static. Okay? And the reason why we got a collapse is that there was a part of the structure which uh, did not have enough strength to withhold the so-called gravitational load or the my poking at it. it strong. So that part weakened and it accelerated and it fell down. Okay? So that's static. Statics. So thank you.